How does a unit in a game knows where to go when you click somewhere? You select a fighter and tell him to attack an enemy, giving only a destination. Now follows the enemy while you can see it, and once in range, it finally attacks. See what I did there? You see, somehow a game unit, like a fighter in a strategy game, knows where to move to reach a given destination. It knows the path and how to reach where you ask it him. You select a group of units and they will move together. Transverse to rage war as one might army in the enemy territory. How does that work inside the game? They need to calculate we are the bridges, gaps, obstacles, enemies, avoiding friendly units moving in a somewhat logical way to where you ask the best way. Now, moving the best way is quite an important phrase and very subjective to each game. We could say the shortest path, the preferred path, the optional path, the safest path, it all depends. This is defined within a navigation system, a system that is made to help units move from point A to point B. Navigation system allows you to pass a go position for a navigation agent and the system will help to generate a path towards that goal through an algorithm it uses, which most often than not is the A star algorithm, which we are not going to cover on this video, but you can find extensive material about it, how it works. So let's hear with a quick example of how this works inside a game. We'll first start with a game unit, which can be a worker, a fighter, anything we want. It becomes a navigation agent, so it's going to use a navigation system, which basically means that this game unit's navigation agent is now a single point inside the system, which is most likely a coordinate point. That game unit now as a navigation agent can request a path from the navigation system, which usually comes within the game world coordinates like a mouse click position and enemy target position, that kind of stuff, which gets passed to the navigation system and through its navigation map it gets a path in return. So navigation systems are built on top of the game graphics, so not necessarily because you put a bunch of floors inside your game, it automatically means that units can move through it. You have to create the navigation maps for each system separately, and depending on the system they are created differently. So now that path gets passed back to the game unit. So that path return for the navigation system is almost like a, a GPS route so that the game unit can navigate towards its destination. So in the game, that same unit gets put inside a game map with a bunch of structures, buildings and navigation information built inside the map. So that path now is returned through a set of points. And those points are where the units will try to move towards. So it's like a set of mini goals which at the end should provide a clear path to its destination. And that is how you use navigation system inside games. For anything we want our units to avoid, it must be implemented inside the navigation system, like obstacles or other units themselves. So, you ask the navigation system, hey, I want to move to that position, so you can use it to navigate a unit to its destination. And here is where it gets interesting. Some navigation systems can be turned to influence how that path is generated. You can say that parts of the map are more preferable than others. This works great for a game that needs its units to prefer walking on roads instead of crossing rivers directly. So, inside the game, you can change how you are going to follow that given path. This fine-tuning of the navigation system is unique for each system and how a game applies it. Some navigation systems can be built on the fly, while some are statically generated and cannot change later. Here are three reasons to use navigation systems. To help simulate realistic movement behaviors when units. Units should transverse logically through a map to reach a given destination, not taking turns where you don't expect them to do it. To transverse dynamically to a given map, sometimes games have dynamic obstacles which we would like units to avoid running into. This type of information cannot be made straight to a navigation map as static information, but it needs to be calculated dynamically. Some navigation systems cannot do this. To help units avoid getting stuck when moving through a map, without a navigation system, units are pretty much blind to the map and its surroundings. This means they don't know where they can walk or where they will be stuck. So this can be useful in practice. For FPS games, enemies can use a navigation system to get to the player through a library, for example. 
For racing games, you can use this to help cars getting to know where they should go to cross the finish line. For strategy games, this is the most common way to navigate units in the world. For a third-person game, you can use this to help allies follow up a given player. There are many ways you can use navigation systems. Depending on the system you use, your units can be more or less intelligent, sometimes at the cost of performance. On the good old older versions prior to 4.0, we didn't have obstacle avoidance built inside the navigation system. This meant we had to come with customized solutions to make units avoid one another, and practically did not allow dynamic moving obstacles, like boxes or barrels, to be avoided by the navigation system. Now Godot has obstacle avoidance and a bunch of new features is still waiting to be revealed and merged together. Navigation systems, depending on your implementation, can mess things up and become a performance bottleneck, translated to fellow gamers as sudden legs, those annoying freezes that stiff the game on and off for a couple of frames. For instance, fetching a new path to a destination every frame or every physics frame will be expensive and provide diminished returns for the navigation visually. It's much better to put a timer delay to that, then on the timeout, if the conditions are met, generate a new updated path. This allows you to reduce the amount of time scaling a navigation system to recalculate a new path from 30 calls to 1 or 2 calls every couple of seconds per unit that uses that navigation system. Delaying the new path calculation will provide almost the same result visually while lifting the performance cost to be much lighter. This of course can depend on the game you are making. Racing games might have way faster pathfinding than strategy games. They might need to recalculate their path more frequently. So if you're making a game and don't know how you're going to make units transverse your map, this is one of the common ways to do it. Using navigation systems combined with game logic is how you can make units move through a game map. In Goodo, we have two main pre-built options for navigation. We have grid or mesh based navigations for 2D and 3D. So that is all for this video, I hope you liked and enjoyed, comment if you have any questions, like the video and as always you can find me on the next video. I'll see you on the next one.